You heard the story, isn't it? We decided this morning. Amen? Amen. So uh, I, one day I visited one of our church members. And, you know, I usually pray with this family. And uh, the day, one day I went then to visit this family so that we can pray. But we didn't pray. Nobody was there to pray with me. And the reason was simple. Because they received, you know, a message that one of their member or the member of their family had cancer. He's about to die. Then to come and pray, they were discouraged. And they were there hoping that something going to happen. But unfortunately, the person passed away. That is very sad. But you see, this story is similar to that experience that I had. But this was a chief of synagogue. A chief of synagogue named Jairus. Her daughter was about to die. Then for him to stay and say, no, oh, I know that she's going to die. Oh, I know that, bye-bye. I know that everything is done. But she said, I will go and meet Jesus. Are you going in a certain situation, difficult situation? It's not just when somebody is uh, sick or about to die, but you are going through a hard difficulty situation that you say, oh, no, I don't need to go to Jesus. I will invite you this morning to go to Jesus and see how Jesus is going to do with you. Hallelujah. So Jesus was in that situation. So Jairus went to, to see Jesus. And the Bible says, when Jesus was coming, all the crowd was looking at Jairus coming because he was a chief. Verse 22, you know, we read that the people of, uh, 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 you know, the people were, afraid, uh, the mother or the parents of this blind guy, the guy who was blind, that Jesus healed. The Bible says that they were afraid of the chief of synagogue. Why? Because they say, if you follow Jesus, we will not allow you anymore to come in the synagogue. In, a, in another way, it's just like, if you accept that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, Messiah means he's God, he's able to do everything, he's able to perform miracles. If you follow that Jesus, you will not come anymore in the church. Can you imagine that? I as a pastor, if you follow Jesus, I will exclude you for, from the church. That's exactly what happened. They are the leaders. They, they read the Bible. They know who Jesus is. They know exactly who was Jesus. But they say, if you follow Jesus, we will exclude you from the synagogue. That was a big obstacle. That's why this morning, the title of my message is what? Is the obstacle in the process of what? Of the miracle. Or the process of your second, you know, second of change that can happen. There are obstacles that can happen. That's why the, the message that I preached last Sunday is a part two of that message. Sometimes God won't make something, a miracle in your life. In a second, he wants to change something in your life. But there are a lot of obstacles. So the first obstacle here, yeah, the first obstacle was what? The leaders of the church. Or I can say the religious leader. The people were afraid that, hey, if I'm excluded from the synagogue, I can't anymore fellowship with other people. I can't anymore, you know, take the Holy Communion. I can't anymore celebrate my marriage in the synagogue. So people were afraid of that than to follow Jesus. What is important for you? The religious part of following Jesus. For your salvation. You know, sometimes we can face all those type of obstacles in our life. Especially even in our church. You know, sometimes somebody can tell you, hey, do you believe that Jesus can still make miracles? And I've seen a lot of people will say, no, I don't believe that Jesus can still perform miracles. And because of that, you don't want to pray. 
That's happened to you, isn't it? Somebody just can't say, hey, do you think that Jesus still performs miracles? Do you think that your situation can be changed by Jesus? Once you hear from that person, you say, you are right. I don't think that Jesus can perform miracles. Let me tell you this morning. In your way of miracle, you always find obstacles. But it depends on you. It depends on your situation. It depends how you see your situation. If you believe that Jesus can bring a solution, you will trust him. Hallelujah. This guy, this guy, he was not even a Christian. He was a religious person. And he was the one persecuting all those who follow Jesus. And the Bible says that when he realized that her daughter was about to die, he said, I will not let that happen. I will go and see the source of life. I will go and see Jesus. I will remove the, the you know, normal position of leader or the religious leader. I will remove that position to go and see Jesus because I know that Jesus can fix the problem of my daughter. Are you in that situation? Oh, brothers and sisters, you know, in America, it's always difficult to believe in Jesus, to trust in Jesus. Why? Because we have money. Why? Because we have a lot of facility or have a lot of resources. You know, if somebody is sick, the first thing that we have to do is to go where? Call 911, isn't it? It's easy. And then if, uh, if 911 doesn't come, you can drive your car because I'm more, I think 80 to 90% of uh, American uh, families have cars, isn't it? If nobody comes, you can decide to take your car. Try to imagine that you can call 911. You have a car and you are facing a situation. Somebody has that situation. Do you still trust Jesus in that situation that Jesus can bring a solution? That's what happened with this guy. I always tell you, Whenever you are sick, whenever you have a problem, even you have to go to see the doctor, even you have to go and see somebody that will have a solution, first go and see the doctor of doctors, who is Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Because by calling to Jesus, trust me, he can even touch the doctor that will touch you. You know, I, I've seen a lot of people who, who die because the doctor made a mistake. Huh? It's a medical mistake, okay? They can't blame you for that. But you are dead. That's why, no matter what situation that you are going through, first consult the doctor of, of the actor. This guy, he went and met Jesus. And the Bible says he fell down. Can you imagine a chief religious, a leader, who was asking to people not to follow Jesus, he himself went and fell down before Jesus. You know, sometimes Jesus will create that, that type of situation. You know, if you try to persecute Christians, you try to be against what God is doing, God can put you in that same position where you will seek Jesus. You know, this guy was persecuting Christians. He was saying, hey, nobody should go and follow Jesus. If you follow Jesus, I will cast you out from the church. I will cast you out from the synagogue. But the Bible says he was the one in that situation where he had to seek Jesus. Oh, the Bible, I, when, I, when I read the Bible, I'm so excited because it brings joy in my heart to see that Jesus is still the same. Hallelujah. Jesus has never changed. He's the Jesus of the past. He's the Jesus of the present. And he's the Jesus of the future. He will never change. Brothers and sisters, when you are going through those type of situations, don't forget that Jesus never, never changed. And this guy came and fell upon Jesus. And said, Jesus, Jesus, my daughter is about to die. I know that you can help me. The good news is that Jesus loves, you know, everyone. No matter the situation that you are, when you come with a humble heart, Jesus, I need you. Can you imagine Jesus is, was doing his business? Jesus has to stop his business and say, Jerus, let's go in. In your house. Now they were in the process for Jairus to see what? The miracle. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's why I say again the theme of my message is what? In the process of your miracle. So he was walking with Jesus. He was so happy. Thank you Jesus for coming in my house. Hallelujah. I'm happy because my daughter will, will, will not die. Hallelujah. 
I'm happy because my daughter will be healed. And they were walking with, he was walking with Jesus and the other disciples. Can you imagine? Jesus said, I'm coming in your house to pray for your daughter. You'll be happy, isn't it? And he was walking, walking, dancing, walking with Jesus. Now comes some miracle. The first obstacle. You see, if you read uh, uh, verse 21, the Bible says he asked Jesus to come and do what? Lay hand. Huh? Lay hand on what? On the door that he said. So for him, laying hand is what? Is the formula of magic, isn't it? Or the formula of miracle. If the pastor doesn't lay hand on me, I will not see the miracle. I want the pastors to come and lay hands on me until I will see that miracle. Let me tell you this morning, that is an obstacle. Amen? Because you have already in your mind a way that God has to perform miracle. Don't tell to God how or Jesus how to perform the miracle. A miracle is a miracle. It can come anywhere. Hallelujah. Just believe that Jesus will perform the miracle. Hallelujah. If you start to think that, hey, they have first to lay hand on me, then the miracle will be performed. You can be in trouble. Because if I lay hand on you and then the miracle didn't perform, what are going to do? You'll be discouraged, isn't it? Huh? Some people will say, for the miracle to be performed, I have to do what? To fast 40 days, 40 nights. If you fast 40 days, 40 nights, and you don't see the miracle, what's going to happen? Huh? Discouraged, isn't it? Or I will call all the big pastors to come and lay hand in my hand on me. If all those big pastors come and they lay hand on you and nothing happens, what's going to happen? Discouraged, isn't it? A miracle is a miracle. It is not controlled with our brain. When God wants to perform a miracle, just believe. Lord, I don't know how you're going to do it. But I just believe in the name of Jesus that you will perform the miracle. Hallelujah. You are going through a situation, no matter which situation that you are going through, just believe on miracle. You know, somebody sent me one day a message and said, Pastor, why do you always talk about miracle every time? Miracle, miracle. And the person sent me a video. And, and in that video, they were showing somebody that was doing fake miracle. You know, they are fake miracles, okay? There are people who, they can go and look for magic to have power. I don't know how they do that. But they perform, or they perform through that magic. And they do miracles. You know, Satan can also do miracles. So when they go there, they have all those magic power, and then they come and perform miracles. That's why, let me tell you, Miracle doesn't bring you salvation. Miracle sets you free. Situation. So that's why miracle are good. Satan controls you. So, and there are people who also perform fake miracle. They will say, okay, pretend that you are blind. And then I will pray for you. And then you open your eyes. Who have seen that? That's a fake miracle, isn't it? I've seen a pastor who was performing a lot of miracles. God was using him in, in the beginning, but now he became very famous. He wanted to do fake miracles. So they brought somebody that was inside the, the casket, eh? pretending that he's dead, that he's a pastor that can you know, raise people from death. So, and they brought you know, the, the, the person in the casket, and he started to pray on that person. But they say, we know that person is not dead. Uh, it was a fake miracle. We don't believe that. And he became, you know, I think uh, those who always follow, you know, YouTube, or we, can, we know all the story. So they are fake miracles. Amen? But what I'm talking about this morning is not fake miracle. I'm talking about miracle in the name of Jesus. We have the power to perform miracle in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That's why when you are going through a situation, Lord, I want to see you a miracle. If you are taking a text, a test, you need just five people. Lord, I want to see you a miracle in this situation. I want to be within, you know, among those five people. 
It's a miracle, isn't it? God will perform that miracle. Lord, I want to buy a house. And this is what you're asking me. I don't have all those requirements. I will pray and I will see your hand in this project. You see? And when you see God performing in, those, you know, in that project, then you will see the miracle of God. Don't just wait to see somebody who is blind or lame to say, okay, there's a miracle. God performs miracles in every situation that you are going through. Lord, I'm seeking for a job. I need your miracle. This is the job that I want. And Lord, I want to see your miracle. God will open that door for you. That's why, brothers and sisters, in the way of your miracle, you will have what? Obstacles. Amen? Are you with me? And the first obstacle here is what? So, the first obstacle can be what I call uh, hypocrisy. You see? Why hypocrisy? Because there are a lot of people who want to follow religion and they want to follow the word of God. When you, when, 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 you know, sometimes when you read the word of God, the word of God said, these are the signs that will accompany those who believe in Christ. In the name of Jesus, they will cast out demons, they will lay hands on sick people, and they will heal. This is the word of God, isn't it? So you don't believe that, but you believe what? Maybe your pastor will say, hey, don't go and follow that man. Eh? If, you, if, you, if you follow what your pastor say versus, you know, versus what the Bible says, you are in trouble, isn't it? You are, bring, you, are, you are playing. You are playing with yourself. You are playing a sort of hypocrisy. Uh, you show that, okay, you are a man that, or a woman that read the word of God. Me, what you don't read? The word of God. You don't believe in the word of God. I want you to believe in the word of God 100%. Amen? Amen. Don't believe 50%. If you believe 50%, you don't believe. 99.9% you don't believe. I want you to believe in the word of God 100%. And you will see God performing, you know, his miracle in your life. Amen? Amen? Amen. We perform miracles in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says that we, the Holy Spirit, can give you the gift of miracles. Huh? So you have to ask for God. God, I need the gift of miracles. So that when I pray, I can see people being blessed, being set free in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Not fake miracle or miracle accompanied by, by demons. No. We want to pray in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. So that you can see your miracle be performed. Hallelujah. So that's the first obstacle. And the second is what? Getting out of your comfort zone. You see, this, this man, this man, this man, this leader, when he met Jesus, what, 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 what does he ask to Jesus? He said, please come and lay hand on, on my daughter. So the comfort zone was what? Laying the hands. But look what happened. While Jesus was going to his house, there is something that happened on the road. There was a lady there who had what? She was losing her blood. And the Bible said that she went and saw the doctors. Nobody could, uh, could heal her. She was still sick even though she spent all her money to the doctors. And the Bible says this young lady, she said, I will just touch what? The garment of Jesus. And I will heal. And the Bible says she went on and touched. You see that? Was she, was she healed? Okay. Now if Jesus was speaking with Jairus, Jesus would say to Jairus, you came to me and said, come and lay your hand on my daughter for you to see the miracle. Look the miracle now. The miracle has happened without me laying hand on, on somebody. Hallelujah. So that's why don't limit God in the miracle. God can pray, you know, Jesus can lay hands on you, or the pastor can lay hands on you, or another child of God can lay hands on you, but sometimes you need to touch the garment of Jesus by faith. Hallelujah. Because I want to see the miracle. Lord, I don't have a job. Lord, I'm seeking for a job. I need your miracle in this situation. I don't need the pastor to come and lay hands on me. But God, I trust you for this position. I trust you for my future. Amen? 
Do you believe that? So with God, don't put God in a box. God always act out of the box. God can act anywhere. Amen. Hallelujah. I was hearing the story of, uh, of, of a man. He, he, was, uh, he, has a, an, an, uh, you know, he was taking care of children. And one day, he has a lot of children. So one day, they didn't have food to eat. No food. And then he called everybody on the table and said, take the plate. We're going to eat. And then the first child said, hey, daddy, what's the food? The food is coming. Let's pray. And while they were praying, some closed their eyes and others opened their eyes to see what's going to happen. Maybe the food will come from the, you know, from the roof and, and fall on the table. So they were looking while they were praying. And suddenly when, when he finished to pray, and he said, Amen. Somebody knocked the door. And he opened the door. And he said, I prepared food for your family today. That's why I brought it and I want to give you the food. And the family were able to have the food on the table. That is a miracle in the name of Jesus. That's why brothers and sisters don't limit God. God wants you to get out of your comfort zone. Because he will always, you don't know where God will bring the miracle. But he will still do the miracle. Just believe. In your way of the miracle, sometimes there can be obstacle. And the obstacle is your comfort zone. Get out of your comfort zone. Let Jesus bless you. Let Jesus perform the miracle in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, may God bless you this morning. As you are listening to this message, you know, I was talking with my daughter last time we were in the car, and she told me, oh, dad, I, I, I'm a little bit afraid, because very soon I'm going to my program, and I'm not sure, oh, I, when I see other people doing this, this, I'm not sure. I say, you are different. Yes. Hallelujah. You are different. Just believe in Jesus, and Jesus will do the rest. You are doing it, you know, you know she works very hard. She has straight A's. I was very proud of her. But I said, that is not enough. Jesus will make you to achieve your goal. Just trust in him. You don't know how that's going to happen. Remember what God did in, the, in, your, in your mother's life. He can do the same thing even above in your life. Just trust him and believe him in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I had that conversation. Brothers and sisters, sometimes in our comfort zone, we don't believe that the miracle will come. But Jesus wants to make us to get out of our comfort zone so that he can perform the miracle. Amen? Do you believe that? Do you believe that? I want to encourage somebody this morning. Hallelujah. I don't know what you are going through, but I want to encourage you to trust on Jesus for your miracle. And the other thing is what? The other thing is, uh, you know, uh, remember that Jesus performed a lot of miracles. Even last Sunday I was saying that the blind person, Jesus can lay hand on you. You can have faith in Jesus as this lady. But also Jesus can use, like what, the mud and saliva to, to, to heal you. And so I can use everything and then I put on you, God can heal you on that. So there are different ways that Jesus can heal you. Don't limit God. And the other thing is that when they were going, this is what happened. As they were going, as they were going on the way, some people came and said, Hey, Jairus, don't disturb anymore Jesus. Because the goal is destroyed. That your lady is there, your, your, your daughter is, is dead. So don't disturb anymore Jesus. Just let him go. Not anymore necessary to come home because your daughter is, is dead. It's too late. Let Jesus go. You see? Try to imagine. Jesus was happy. He was down going with Jesus. That Jesus was going to heal, you know, Hadora. And unfortunately, they said to Jesus, it's too late. Leave Jesus alone. If you were in the shoes of Jesus, what's going to happen? Huh? You'll be discouraged, isn't it? That is another obstacle, discouragement. How many times you have prayed? 
I prayed, I prayed. I have my personal experience. I've been in the church for all my life. I've been praying. I don't see nothing happen. What are you talking about? I'm discouraged. I've been praying for a month. I'm discouraged. I'm praying for six months. God, I'm discouraged. Brothers and sisters, don't be discouraged. Hallelujah. There is still hope in Jesus. Hallelujah. There is still hope in Jesus. There is still hope in Jesus. Did you believe that this morning? There is still hope. Even when everything is done, there is still hope. Jairus was discouraged. And Jesus came to him and said, Jairus, just believe. Don't give up. Just believe. Just believe. Hallelujah. You know, uh, when you are going through situations, it can be maybe you lose your job, maybe somebody passed away, or maybe you have diabetes, or maybe cancer, no matter which type of disease. There are people that will come with bad news. Amen? Then to pray for you, they will bring bad news. They will say, hey, last week I saw somebody who passed away from cancer. Try to imagine if you are, you are sick and you hope you trust Jesus for your healing. And somebody's come and said, hey, don't deceive Jesus. Last week somebody passed away from cancer. Since you have cancer, just wait to die. That's a bad news, isn't it? Sometimes somebody will tell you, oh, we are, we are all human. We are here on earth. Nothing can happen in your life. Huh? We are all. You don't need to give your life to Jesus. We are all. That's bad news, I'm telling you. You have to get away from those bad news in the name of Jesus. Oh, replace those bad news by good news. Replace those bad news by good news. Jesus can still heal you. Jesus can still bring a new solution. Jesus can transform. That's why he was saying, although they told you that your daughter is dead, did I tell you? Believe. Only believe. I'll bring something new. And the Bible says, Jairus, he was so discouraged. And in a certain moment, he has to raise up his head and say, yes, Jesus, now I believe you. Now I trust you. And the Bible said they were continuing. But Jesus was holding his hand and saying, yes, I know that you are discouraged, but come follow me. We are still on the way of your miracle. Let's go, let's go. And Jairus was following Jesus. Hallelujah. And the Bible said when they reached in the house, the, the, the daughter was there dead. And the Bible said, Jesus get in and say what? Talika kumi. Which means what? Young daughter, rise up. The resurrection. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. Even something is dead, I will bring it alive. If your job is dead, Jesus will bring it alive in the name of Jesus. Oh, if your situation is dead, your business is dead, Jesus will bring life. Do you believe that this morning? Oh, do you believe that this morning? Jesus is telling you, don't, 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 don't give up. Don't give up. Don't doubt. I can bring a new solution in your situation. Hallelujah. I went through this situation. I have a lot of testimony where what was impossible, Jesus made it possible. What was impossible in my personal life, Jesus made it possible. It's not, it's not a story. It's not just what I heard. It's not because I want just to say it. It's true. What is impossible, Jesus can make it possible. Do you believe that Jesus can heal you from your disease? I know that some people here, they have high blood pressure. They have diabetes. They have uh, what? They have uh, 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 high cholesterol. Do you believe that Jesus can heal you from all that? You know, I will not schedule a moment of prayer. You know, when, when Jesus connects in a season like this, everybody that is sick, Jesus will heal. Do you believe that? 
I will not say, hey, come, come, we're going to pray. But I can just connect you to the one that can make impossible to be possible. Jesus. Do you believe that? This young lady was dead. And Jesus brought her back. And she wake up. The Bible says, without faith, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, without faith, nobody can please God. Faith means I have confidence in you, God. Oh, I trust you for this situation. I know that you are the only one that can fix this problem. Oh, Lord, I trust you. I told you already that every single time I pray for myself, I pray for my organs, I say, Lord, take care of my heart. Lord, take care of my pancreas. Lord, take care of my lungs. Lord, take care of all the important organs in my life. The liver. I always pray. My blood, capillaries, everything, I always pray. Do you pray for yourself? And do you trust Jesus for that? Because I say, you are the, you are the, the, you are the one who made me God. You know me better than everyone. Even better the, than the doctor. Lord, heal me. Set me free from all disease. Hallelujah. And every day I can see God renewing my strength, renewing my life. And I feel like sometimes they say, hey, you are 30 years old. No, I'm not 30 years old. I'm more than that far away. Why? Because Jesus renewed my strength. He renewed my life. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Can you raise up your hands and say, Jesus, I'm ready to receive from you my blessings, my healing. Oh, Lord, open a new door. I trust you, Jesus, that you can change my situation in a second. Oh, God, I believe you for my family. You can bring new things in the name of Jesus. Oh, believe that this morning, as you are praying, oh Lord, my future is on your hands. Oh, open your heart and start to speak to Jesus. Because the Jesus that I believe, he can perform that miracle this morning for you. Just open your heart and trust Jesus that he is the one that can heal you, that can set you free, that can renew your life. Oh, no matter what situation that you are going through, Jesus is here, ready to heal you. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for healing your people, oh God. Thank you for healing your church. Lord, you can see the situation of your children. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, no matter the situation that you are going through, Lord, you have never changed. You are the same God. You are the same Lord. This morning, I pray in the name of Jesus that your children will experience what they have never, never experienced before in their life, in their family. In the name of Jesus, receive, receive, receive your healing. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Receive your deliverance. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that this morning, oh Lord, your children will testify that you are the God that set free. In the name of Jesus, receive, receive, receive your healing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, thank you for your presence. I worship and I praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we praise Jesus this morning? Because Jesus is here and setting us free. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. We worship and we praise you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. May God bless you this morning. Hallelujah. Do you feel the presence of God this morning? It's the same God. Don't stop on those obstacles. God is here to set you free. May God bless you.